Okay, so, here we go. Um, so this came out of the Forge Bane box. Um, from what I understand, it's gonna be a little bit different than the one you buy when it's on the shelf. Um, I think somebody was pointing out that, uh, let's see, this is a B. Um, let's see, what else was there? B, and then, and it's a solo, like it doesn't, it's not clipped off of anything. Um, <clears throat> and let's see, I think they were saying that there isn't an A. Uh, yeah, there's no A. So one of the cool things that the, that the hypothesis was, is like you can see how this is all, um, you know, like you're, you're gonna be able to clip these, you know, they're gonna break these, stick them in a box that's gonna be, you know, however big. Um, but this is a solo, but if you also notice, it has the shoulder pads, um, and it has the guns, um, and I think the faces. So the idea is that uh, there's gonna be another set that has different guns. So you're not just gonna have the melt lance um, and maybe the chain glaive, I think it's called. And there might also be different shoulder pads. I don't know, I'm speculating there. But chances are there's gonna be an A uh, that's gonna have different faces and weapons. So that's something to consider, uh, keep an eye out. So chances are, um, if you're putting this guy together, oh, there's more faces. Um, <clears throat> there's gonna be other options down the road. Uh, so maybe either make these modular or don't buy a whole bunch of these thinking that this is gonna be the end all. Um, buy one or two if you want and then wait for the actual set. Kind of like the last night when it came out, like they dropped it and then if you wanted uh, dorsal weapons or like the Gatling cannon, uh, the uh, the power fist, uh, you had to buy it all over again. Okay, so quickly looking at this, we have that B sprue. Um, so the first things I'm looking for are faces. I love different heads and faces. It gives you personality and character. So this is different than the one that we saw, the Cyclops. Um, it kind of has like a chaos-y kind of feel, but not entirely. Uh, I like that little, you know, that breather uh, thing. Um, and this is kind of harkening back to that the, uh, the the Forge World alternate head for the night. So kind of going for the sci-fi look. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, I like that they put those the gears on there. Like we're getting kind of a Mechanicum kind of feel to it. So, oh, I bet that's it. I bet that's it. I bet that we're getting alternate shoulder pads for more of the non-Mechanicus uh models. I bet that's it. Okay, I'm speculating once again, but thankfully we're going to do House Tyrannus. Um, next, we have the this one that I broke off. Um, it looks like the legs are one piece. Um, I mean, two pieces really, but you know, each leg segment is attached. So if you want to customize this, we're going to be cutting this up. So I'm going to put together one fairly stock. Um, and then after that, like my second one, I'm going to chop up and uh, redesign. Um, the cool thing I'm noticing here, though, is <clears throat> they're symmetrical, and they seem to attach right there. So I bet you you could swap. Although the looks like the pose is relatively similar, it looks like this one is a bit more outstretched, ever so slightly, than the other one. But yeah, it looks like the pose is relatively similar. So um, chances are, you know, you're gonna have a pretty you're going to have few options. You're going to have to cut that little peg to put the foot on differently if you don't want it like that. So actually, I might go ahead and modify it slightly there. But um, Let's see. Next sprue. Let's see. <clears throat> um, that's different. So we have two different gun options. Um, I think so far that I've seen is the melted gun on top, but it looks like there's a heavy stubber as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it looks like just a smaller version of the knight. I mean, through and through. So, uh, and then simplified. So here we have this, uh, the door is sealed, um, unlike the other one where it's open, or uh, um, uh, separate. Um, honestly, like, I don't see why they didn't do that with the other one, <laughs> because the detail, the interior wasn't detailed, so it's not like, you know, unless you want to do a gung-ho with it, which is fine, I guess, give us options, right? So, um, <clears throat> and last one, more faces, there's the Cyclops. Um, there's not the Cyclops. Uh, Ooh, look at those big old feet, big old clod hoppers. So I see like the arms are put together kind of similar. There's that shoulder. Um, yeah, there's a lot of similarities. And it looks like, yeah, so they're carrying a lot of the uh, assembly 
uh, over to the smaller guys. So anyway, uh, let's let's throw one of these together, take a look at it real quick, and then get on to the painting. All right, there it is. Um, he's kind of uh, blue tacked for the most part. Um, some of the neat things about this is like just like the uh, your other knights, uh, this is kind of friction fitted, so you can swap between that the stubber and the uh, melt gun. Um, I think there's gonna be some other options. I'm I'm dead set, concerned, uh, convinced. Uh, so yeah, I, I left a little uh, roll bar off the front, or a grabby bar. Maybe it's the oh shit handle when he's driving really badly, I don't know. Um, yeah, I gave it a little bit of a dynamic base. I did trim some of the uh, um, the little foot tabs. I think I showed you those earlier. So I can change the foot position. Um, I think with this one I had to like shave a little bit of the foot down. But otherwise I really didn't modify it too much. It's pretty much um, the, the stock kit. Um, the head isn't glued in there. Um, the top is glued, but this, uh, the care piece is not. Um, so we'll be able to take all these apart. See, a little blue tack or white tack. I think it's also called artist putty. Um, anyway, so we'll be able to uh, take it apart. Um, yeah, so gun separate, all this separate. Um, this guy's separate. This is actually gonna be uh, silver. Um, so, and I, I point that out because um, a lot of these pieces I'm trying to separate by uh, color. Um, the only thing that I'm gonna have to like mask a ton of is going to be um, the weapons a bit. I think like the, the major housing is probably gonna be red. Um, and then the rest is gonna be silver. So I'll end up uh, painting that red, mask it, hit the majority of it silver, and then go back and like hit our uh, brush, the rest of it silver. And then this guy's gonna be the same way. So this will be red. I might do that red, I'm not too sure. Um, and then the rest will be silver. So I'll mask that once it's done, like a rough masking. Uh, Cause a lot of this trim, I don't really care if I get the Xenothal lighting, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the head is going to be silver, so I could actually just glue that in there, but I'm going to leave it off so I can get the details on the back. Uh, and then, you know, like this um, red, I'll probably paint the inside silver, um, but I won't have to really mask for that. Um, I'll just try to be controlled with it. Uh, so that's kind of how it breaks down. We just get all the plates off, oops, and his uh, swole cock plate. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's prime this guy and get to it. Okay, so it's a little bright out right now, but bear with me. Let's see if we can do this. Um, so I'm going to start off with the Ferrari Red. Uh, yeah. Give it a shake. Red, red, red. Uh. So my airbrush is gumming up a little bit. Or it's not gumming up, I just need more paint. And it's on the floor. So I'm leaving the shoulder pads and the uh, shin plates alone. We're not gonna paint those just yet. They're gonna be black and white. We're just doing this itty bitty little trim piece right here. And we got some casing on the gun. This one as well. And I kind of shot up top and then, oops, I kind of shot up top and then down below. Uh, so I, I just kind of wanted it to fade in between and have like little dark spot where it dips in, uh, just to give it a little bit more interest. 
Now, when we, after we paint these toes and get them all, oops, get a little straight rock, um, we'll go back through here and mask these off when we paint the the uh, the body. Definitely find that wall spraying, and later on when we dry brush too, uh, if we dry brush, yeah, we should. Um, yeah, you're gonna find like all sorts of rocks that come off, but that's okay. We got lots of touch-ups to do on this thing. Okay. Let's clean and clean this out a little bit, and then uh, get another bro color. Light red. Nice and easy. No fancy name, just light red. But it kind of has like an orangish quality to it. So if you don't like that, I don't know what to tell you. Other than don't use it. Um, but I like it. I like a little orange. It's a little hard to see with this light. Okay. Sorry, I had to clean the nozzle out a little bit. Oops, let's let go over raccooning a little bit. Gotta chill. Getting too excited. Splatter there. Whoa. All right. I got to clean this guy out. Okay. I think I got it. Right, let's try again. Almost done. Okay, just gonna hit some of these real quick. Okay. All right, let it sit for a sec. Hey, look at that, the sun's going down. Ah, oh. okay, so I masked off a bunch of this and we're gonna go with this gun metal. Um, and get the the armature of this guy. So let's see how this goes. Um, actually, I'm not going to bother with that one. Uh, there we are. This is ultimately going to look like that. And if if you don't get it all the way up to the, the red, that's fine. Um, we're probably going to do a little bit of hand painting on this. This just kind of roughs it in. Oop, we really should put these to the side so we don't get any flex of stuff all over them. Oh, need that, yeah. Silver, silver, silver. There we go. Cool. One. Okay, there we go. And the big guy. Oops, oh, we got a head too. Let's do the head real quick. Yep, big guy.
Okay, is that everything? All right, close enough. Okay, let's wash this out because we want to get rid of the flex and then we'll hit the shoulder pads and shins. All right, we're going to start with uh, a little coat of gray. This is the Model Masters flat black. Um, it's not a, a airbrush paint, but with a little bit of uh, thinner, we can make it one. Um, I really like it because it, oops, excuse me. Uh, I really like it because it has a, um, it, it flows really nicely. It has a nice matte finish. Uh, and it, it almost like acts as a primer as you put it on. Um, and then when we add white, we're going to use a little bit of the Model Masters white. Because uh, I haven't found a white yet that doesn't splatter uh, besides that one. And it's not an airbrush paint. So let's give this a shot. Actually, I did buy some GW airbrush paint. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, so maybe we should do that instead. Okay, just for... Good old experimental reasons. Okay, hold on a second. Throw some of this in here. Why isn't it going? Okay. Pro tip: uh, Don't put your the leg of your chair on the hose. <laughs> so, oops. Okay, so we're just gonna freshen up this black real quick. Yeah, a nice flat black. Love it. Smooth out the texture. Okay, give that a moment. Okay. So let's just go ahead and shoot it right down the middle, right along that seam. Ah, yeah, this is not... Working too good. Sometimes you just have to adjust the needle or scrape junk off. Boop, boop, boop. And that uh, should clean up really nicely. It's kind of the, the drawback to these guys. But it's totally worth it. I think the technique you end up with is, uh, or the, the effect is really nice. Oops. Get a little crazy. Feather it out a little bit. Okay. There we go. And I'm not sure which side I'm gonna go with on this. Just put it down the bottom. Ah! Shit. I added just a little bit more white just to bump up the contrast a tad. And remember how I said the white doesn't splatter? Oops. Okay. So there's that. I'm gonna try and get a little bit in the corner here. There we go. Okay. Okay. So um, we are going to put a little bit of brown. We, we I quartered these guys. Um, so now we have a gray on one side, black gray on one side. And then we're gonna put a little bit of brown on the other, and then work our way up to a white. Had to put a little bit of oil on the, my airbrush. Still looks like it's, there we go. Needs a little bit of love. I need something that's like a, made by Tonka, or something really hardy. Let's give that a moment. Right, I had to switch brushes. The uh, Iowata, I think it, the needle is just about toast. So we're back to the tank, the Pache. Uh, it's having a little bit of issues with it as I try to get it back. I think I, like, once I was done with it, I just kind of, like, left it on my desk without cleaning it. Um, yeah, I don't do that. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, yeah, it's having a little bit of issues. If I were, uh, a more patient person, I would wait until the store was open and get a new needle and bring the other one back. So I'm just gonna get some real basic white in there. There we go. Just gentle. Real gentle. Try 
trying to get rid of some of those waves. There we go, that's nice and smooth. Yeah, takes a little bit of patience. There we go. Almost there. Okay. There we go. Alright. Give that a second. Uh, we'll change this up. Let's throw a little bit of black on that base. Get a uh, touch up where we got a little bit of overspray and where some rocks fell off. There we go. Should we go pretty quick? Uh, there. I think in the past I'd put some other colors in here. I might just do gray. Just kind of keep it simple, but I'm not sure. We'll see. I'll, th I'll think a little bit about that. Um, you know, I could use a wash to bring out a little bit of brown in here. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And then maybe we can just uh, maybe we could airbrush a little bit of brownish gray onto the rocks from that little cliff. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Okay, there we go. Uh, oops, let that chillax. Okay, there we go. A little bit of gray. Okay. Uh, let's see. Looks like that's about as far as it wants to go. I was hoping it'd get a little bit lighter and kind of a spotlight look. All right, so I threw just a little bit of this uh, uh, light brown uh, in the pot and see if we could lighten up these rocks just a little bit. Any bigger? Okay. All right. And I think we're ready to take off all the masking tape. See what kind of a mess we made. All right. Looks like that needs a little bit of touch up. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, a little bit of touch up. Should be good. Yeah, there we are. Feeling pretty good about this. Alright, I'm gonna need some tweezers. These surgical tweezers are nice, but they don't really grab much. It's like learning chopsticks for the first time. <clears throat> there we go. I think once we, uh, Freshen up that silver, it's gonna look really good. All right, I'll do this off camera. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit of this black and kind of go back and just uh, touch up the edges just slightly. And there really isn't too much to do here. No, I think there's just a couple of these, yeah. Okay, there we go. It. Um, and then I think we're going to go into transfers. All right, so transfers. Um, this uh, I'm, I'm going to do a, a one on here uh, on camera, and then I'll let you do the rest. So after we're done spray painting and everything, or not spray painting, uh, airbrushing, um, I like to do the transfers because later on we're going to uh, do a little bit of um, uh, weathering, and we might use the uh, uh, a little sponge technique and by putting the transfers on first we're allowing ourselves to chip the transfer area um, and so yeah just instead of having to go back and forth uh, fixing things up <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do that I think we're gonna start with um, we'll start with one of these guys and yeah so I'm gonna let you um, do or I'm gonna do this off camera after this first one um, Pop it in our water. 
I have this little lid that I like to use. Uh, it does take a little bit. So, um, so yeah, I mean, do it off camera so you guys can uh, play with it the way you want to. Um, I realize it that way. Um, so let's see. Afterwards, we'll probably hit up a lot. Of, we'll touch up the silver uh, and let that go. So I'm going to... We'll, we'll cut to the uh, finished uh, moist transfer. All right, so this guy's all moist. Uh, oops. Um, I'm just going to let that float in there for a second. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is I have this microsol. I'm sorry, microset. Um, this is going to kind of act like a glue. So put a little bit of this on the area. Uh, and then uh, that kind of preps it. Um, I'm going to take this guy, try to wipe off a little bit of the extra water, and then kind of a mess today. Get it about where we want it. Um, grab a brush. I accidentally threw the other one across the room. There we go. Okay. So let that sit while we grab the uh, microsol. And this is, I really love the night decals. I think they're like, they're really top notch. They, they cut them to the edge of the image. Uh, so you don't have a whole lot of like, um, like that clear uh, film to worry about. However, I'm going to, uh, and this, this seems to be relatively flat, even though it does have a curve to it, like it's, it's relatively flat. So it looks like we are going to have to like touch this up a little bit because it looks like this doesn't quite go to the edge of the black. Um, now the saw, okay. So the set is like a glue. The saw, um, kind of deteriorates the, uh, the vellum or the film, whatever it is, um, and makes it a little bit more pliable. Uh, and like typically with like space ring shoulder pads. Um, it would theoretically um, uh, just kind of make it more pliable. So I don't know if you've ever done this with space rings, but like their shoulder pads are so uh, convex that it's hard to get something like a uh, emblem over there without it like buckling and looking atrocious. Um, so the uh, solvent um, should uh, should kind of wrap it smoothly. I don't feel that it really does. Uh, so I do have to make like I with my space rings I have to make little slits, um, just to kind of let it like uh, uh, overlap a tad. But um, yeah, so uh, the other, another alternative is to use Ard coat, um, and this is what GW suggests is to use Ard coat, uh, and I, I think that's a really good alternative with this with the shoulder pads. Um, so you put down a layer of Ard coat, you put down your uh, shoulder or your uh, your pad. And then you cover it with art code again. Of course, like you have to make the slits. Um, but what I found is if you use the microsol, like if you try to put down art code, put down your pad, and then use a microsol on top of that while the art code is still drying, it's, it kind of curdles a little bit, um, and you get this like white pasty, like chunky stuff on there. So don't mix microsol and art code. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, go ahead and hit up the rest of your decals, and we'll be back. All right, let's get a little bit of chipping going on. So we got some pluck foam. Dab, 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 dab. And let's see. I think people will be kind of entering this way. Go along that. Dab, 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 dab. Oh yeah, definitely along the bottom of the shins. Let's just throw a little bit on there. And where else? Oh, on the gun for sure. I'm sorry, the chain axe sword. And I forgot, I'm going to put another emblem on there, so I'm going to hold off on that for now. We'll do that off camera. I was thinking a little uniformity might be good. Okay, yeah, I have a tendency to go a little wild, uh, crazy with this, and I'm trying to be a little conservative, so. so. All 
There we go. All right. All right. Let's uh, start diversifying our our metallics. Uh, got a little bit of this dwarf bronze that kind of come in here and hit some of these uh, hingy bits. And then um, also the uh, over here, I don't know what the heck this is, but I like it when it's goldish. And so should you. <laughs> Feels like this gold is a little bit runny. I haven't used it in a few years. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna do this off camera uh, and then we'll show you what we came up with. So I ran around and hit up some uh, little gold bits and bobs. Um, I'm gonna put some more on there later on but I wanna uh, paint that black. Uh, and yeah, so there's that. Um, I did the uh, uh, shielding there. Bloop. Uh, blib, 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 blib. And I mean, there's really no, you know, like, uh, there's, there's no particular order. I mean, I just kind of went around and picked out a few things just to differentiate them. Um, when I hit it with null oil, it's going to tie a lot of these together. Uh, so they won't be so drastic. But in the meantime, um, we're going to get some lead belcher. And I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna clean up some of these spots. So you know what I want to do is take it. I want to hit the edges here, um, and then you know like here. So a lot of the places where there's a little bit of uh, metal trim, um, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera. I mean this is really basic stuff, um, and the sun is coming in, <laughs> so um, pretty soon here like this my area is gonna be flooded. So I'm gonna take care of the lead belcher and then we'll get back um, and we'll probably null oil or do a little bit more touch up so I'm not too sure we'll see how it goes all right there's a couple of little spots that could use some uh, let's see what is this uh, storm host silver I haven't used it in a while so let's get in there so these are gonna be the areas that have been kind of rubbed down a little bit like a little friction so they're pretty smooth so this would be one area and then uh, the hydraulic ram would be an area not the whole thing just the piston part this might actually take a couple layers I usually use mithril silver gosh if you still have some mithril silver try that like it goes on really nicely I think these uh, these newer light silvers are a little watery. And then, yeah, we're gonna kind of focus down here. Actually, I take it back. You want to focus at the top, but that's all right. We're we'll probably just give them an even coverage, and then let the uh, the null oil kind of change the value. And then right here, this little ball, it's gonna get some friction. You don't have to do the whole thing, like do the parts that be rubbed on. If you do the whole thing, that's fine too. The null oil will take care of it. Okay, like I said, don't do the whole thing. I just did the, <laughs> just, I just brought it up to the top. And then while you're at it, um, this little strut as well. Actually, that's not a strut. I guess that would be a, a hydraulic ram. It has the hydraulic cable right there, so that's a ram. Also, there's a gas cylinder strut. Okay. I was gonna say we're gonna do some null oil after this, but I just realized that there's some gray that we have to put down for the rubber boots. All right, I'm gonna do this off camera to speed it up, and we'll come back. It's a boot problem we have to take care of. I'm gonna bring our light over. 
Okay, so right in here is one of them. And where was the other one? Um, oh, the toes. Yeah, right in between the toes. And the foot. And for this, we're using the Mechanicum Standard. Because, I mean, it is standard after all. Alright. Oops, you can't even see what I'm doing, can you? So we're getting in between that plate and then the, the main hip. <clears throat> Alright, may as well hit these. Getting a little sloppy. Don't be sloppy. There's a lot of cleanup work later. I think cleanup work is what eats up most of my painting time. There we go. There's the boot on the foot. Finish the boot on the hip. Then we'll go to no oil. I was thinking about um, highlighting this, but I think they're so small that it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, okay, cool. Give it a second to dry. We'll start with something small. Start with the, the neck collar. Here's a bucky. So I'm going to hit the silver and then uh, let it dry and then we'll do the, um, we'll do some recesses after that. Get some contrast in the, in the red. Oh man. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. This is fun. This is a slather all over project. So keep doing this, I'll do it off camera, <clears throat> and get back to you. Yeah, if you want to, you could probably call it right there, um, but we're not going to, are we? Uh, we have a few other things to do, so let's get that null and oil back out. Um, and I kind of want to add a little bit of, uh, oops, it's getting darker out. Let's get through your ISO up there. Um, actually, I think this guy's just about good. Put a little bit of null oil in the recess there, uh, just to accentuate that. You throw a little bit in the crack here. Um, now this is kind of what I was talking about feathering it. Um, so let's see, try to explain that a little bit. Um, bring light over. Uh, actually, this one's pretty much done. I don't want to mess with that one. Um, let's see, what's a good one? Do, do, do. Here we go. Let's do this guy right here. Uh, so, so what we're gonna kind of do is take the edge here uh, and then bring this along there. And real quickly, I'm, I'm using spit, but you could use water. And we're gonna well, they call it voiding the brush out. So we're gonna get rid of the paint, um, and then we're gonna use a little bit of water to just feather it in there. We'll make a nice transition. There we go. Um, then throw a little bit in here. Get that, uh, oops. 
Um, try to get that guy cleaned up a little bit. And that. So we get the uh, the rivets. So that guy's done. Those shoulder pads are gonna be real easy. Um, so going on to the the cock plate. I think this is just real simple, just right around the rivets, just to make them pop. Later on, we'll hit them with a little bit of the uh, the light silver. I think I ended up, you know, starting with a storm host, and then I. Um, I like the consistency of the, the rune fang, so I ended up switching to that, but whatever, uh, whatever makes you happy, or if there's another brand you like, go for it. This I'm going to hit a couple different times, just because it's, um, I need some place to put my fingers. And dollop, dollop, dollop. So there's a lot of these. Um, I'm gonna let you do this on your own now that you kind of know what I'm doing, and we'll come back. Okay, so now that we have all the rivets and everything done, um, let's let's see. I'm gonna get a different brush. Um, let's get a little bit of black in our Mechanica standard. Um, Start by let's do this uh, eye, uh, eye watch my jig. Um, first off, paint it black and feel free to add a little bit of water or spit to it just to thin it down just a tad. Um, I'm not a big proponent of thinning your paints to be honest, um, although. Uh, I, I, I think like it, it's it's a matter of brush control uh, to be honest I think you can glob stuff on um, just so long as you have the right control you can push it around to where you end up like thinning it I think that um, the uh, all of the thinning your paints is usually good in the beginning um, as you kind of figure out what works and what doesn't so I, I think it's a good idea if you're just starting out however if you learn to use brush control, then uh, you can just circumvent that and just go straight from the pot. So it's up to you. Ultimately, I'd recommend um, getting to know your materials. Uh, I'm gonna add just a little bit, um, a little bit lighter slanishy gray to this. So I'm not quite getting that contrast that I want. And then, so I do that and then I water it down just a little bit. There we go. Um, and then what I'm gonna end up doing is art coating this so it's really glossy. Uh, Cause I want it to look dark in there. Like he's got all the lights off. Um, and he's just doing his thing. Okay, so we're gonna put Slanisha Gray to the side. I'll wash off that detail brush. Um, and the next thing we have to do is this guy. Uh, let's see, start at the bottom and work our way up. And the reason being is that we can, I guess it really doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna start at the bottom. I was gonna say that usually with the smaller uh, items, I like to work my way up. That way the top is nice and fresh so I can do the wet blending. But this is so massive, we could actually just jump right to the wet blending if we wanted to. So I'm gonna start kind of down lower. Just to get a real quick layer on there. And I'm gonna fart about it. So gross. And I'm not gonna do the do full cover on the top just yet. There we go. Okay, and moisten that up real quick. And get our standard. Blend it in there. It's gonna take a few pass-throughs. Not a big fan of edge highlights. Uh, I think I've pointed this out before, but edge highlights 
Um, they're usually, uh, in reality, we don't have a whole lot of edge highlights. And the way they work is kind of backwards from how, <laughs> like, like, when you see an edge, um, it's typically darker than it is lighter. In this case, when it's up against black, it probably would be a little bit lighter. Um, so I am going to th throw a little bit of, a little bit of gray in the recesses. But I'm going to be kind of uh, haphazard with it. Because also in reality, um, your, your edges aren't uniform. Like it's the grime and gristle of the wear and tear. Uh, and it rarely puts it on evenly. So you would want to put it on unevenly. But you want to do it in such a way that it looks naturally uneven. Uh, and it's not like, you, you kind of learn after a while how to have like a, a lazy paint style that looks realistically uneven. It's, I think like when you're just straight up lazy, like it just, it often just looks that way, but there's, it's weird. There's like an art to being messy. It's really weird. I think it's like having a subconscious understanding of what you can get away with. And through like a series of observations and the really real, they kind of get you there. Okay, so there's that. Um, it's real subtle, but there's that highlight on top. Um, now, let's see. Thankfully this is black and it dries really fast. Uh, we can get a really fine detail brush I happen to have one laying around. And then we can get that slimy she gray. While we're at it, this is actually the next step. There's gonna be a series of textures. So I'm gonna just kind of chip up this area, like the little dings and scratches. And that's actually what I end up doing for edge highlights uh, is you know, I understand what we're trying to do with edge highlights. We're trying to define the edge of the sculpt. Um, so I think that through tear and weathering, we're kind of doing the same thing. And we want to be, once again, uneven. There we go. Ta-da! And of course that we're not going to mess with. Um, so let's give this a second. We'll reconnoiter and figure out what we're going to do next. All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and do up some eye orbits. Um, got some catechin green and some ogren camo. Uh, I'm going to get these guys ready because we're going to do a little bit of wet blending. All right, catechin green. Let's see how that works. And this one's drying up a little bit. So add some uh, good old spit lubricant. And there we go. Let's see what the flark I'm doing. Okay. I didn't realize how small this was. I wasn't really paying attention to it. It's pretty small. Kind of go back and forth until you get a nice, you know, we're putting it just on the bottom. And blend it in. Cool. And there she is. And, um, yeah. I think that's good. Fireball orange. Uh, bloop. That's a big bugger. And uh, we're going to go in and kind of give these, uh, these little nicks, give them some dimensionality to them. It's a long process. 
you see what I'm doing here, right? Like, I'm gonna go in and put the neck, the uh, the orange, um, just underneath the uh, um, the black chips. See what? Um, yeah, this r replicates the the sun hitting the um, the or not the recessed. What would you call it? the not recessed areas? Yeah, the not recessed areas. I think it's the scientific term for it, right? And then while you're at it, you may as well. Uh, then you could do some like scratching. Some light scratching. Recess, recess, recess. There you go. Yeah. Hope you can see that. I do that a ton. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. Oh man, I had a little bit of fun with the uh, with the chain blade. Uh, so I got some extra nicks and scratches in there. Uh, see some dings. Let's see. Oh, there we are. Um, yeah, we'll zoom in a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Um, okay, the next thing we're gonna uh, do is get your rune fang. And let's see. I'm gonna start something easy. And then work our way up. Uh, so let's start with the. Um, I farted some more and some more. This this little hood thing. And then we're just gonna grab the uh, the bolts. Maybe where I had like some excessive black. Uh, kind of get that chumped up a little bit. Not everywhere there's black. Just where there's excessive amounts. And once again, I'm trying to be kind of random, but still stick to the black. Okay. Um, yeah, it's coming along. Okay, and then with the uh, with the silver metal areas, uh, yeah, just kind of do a little bit of slashes. This is where it's going to be a little bit worn, and this is kind of like where we're not doing edge highlighting, but we kind of are um, by kind of chipping it a little bit. Um, we're getting the same effect without making it, or while maintaining like a realism. Uh, here's a little part where I had uh, screwed up the sprue. So get in there, we're gonna do some slashes. And as he's going through, um, like I have kind of like a woodland base kind of feel to my guys. So maybe he's like brushing up against the uh, tree canopy a little bit. There we go. Okay. How's that look? Yeah, so go ahead and do that with everything else. Um, when we get, I'm gonna do pretty much everything, but I'm gonna save the, the main guy. Uh, and that'll be a good uh, place to kind of look at some other chipping and weathering, but we are almost done, guys. This is super exciting. There we go. Um, some little slashes on there. A little roughage in the back. Um, let's see. Yeah, just little, just little textures. Um, okay, so, ooh, yeah, the head. I really like how the head turned out. I think the 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 gunmetal on there looked really good, so uh, I just made like a nice canvas for the silver. So everything is taken care of except for the body. Um, 
So I just wanted to kind of point out a few places to keep an eye out for. Um, uh, yeah, so we're gonna kind of come in there and just do slung edges a little bit uh, on the uh, like the upward facing edges. Um, so we're kind of simulating a little bit of um, light, but we're not going to focus exclusively on those. So, I mean, the legs, of course, are going to get a little bit more um, activity uh, just because they're brushing into things. Um, yeah. And you don't have to go too crazy with it. Um, a lot of this silver is not going to be as... Uh, uh, people aren't going to be paying it that much attention to it. I think like right around the hips they will. So if you make sure to um, get some nice textures on there, because you know like when you when it's all said and done with, you're gonna have this guy on here. And actually, uh, one technique might just be to glue this on, and then you're not um, painting redundant parts. You know you're not painting underneath there. Um, so you could do that. Uh, or you can trust your judgment. You know, if there's a little bit of overlap, you know, like this kind of goes underneath here, um, that could be kind of interesting too. It'd be kind of weird, like how would that uh, wear happen? You know, like would, did something slide down in there or whatever? So that could raise some questions. Not that anybody's really gonna be paying attention to like how, but you know, I think like subconsciously we do kind of wonder, you know, and unless you have it uh, plausible, then your mind kind of rejects it, uh, whether you realize it or not. Your subconscious can be like, mm, that's bullshit. So, yeah. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, let me pick out all the, uh, all the bolts. I'm getting kind of tired. My aim is off, but uh, and then once you're done with that, um, go back and freshen up the hydraulic rams. And there it goes. Eh, I forgot about the emblem on the back. Uh, so a little bit of white. And I'm getting tired. My accuracy is totally off. Um, Okay, so then we'll add some of that mechanic, no, we'll add uh, Chaos Black and then some Mechanicum Standard to the other side. And they'll probably use a little bit of Nullin Oil to uh, take care of the shadows on this guy. My aim is getting way off. Let's blow on it a little bit. Get it to dry a little bit faster. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So there's that. Um, bloop, bloop, bloop. Gosh, I had it just a minute. Oh, there it is. All right. Black and Mechanicum. Yeah, my aim is so horrible. It's actually doing all right. I can pull it out. There we go. Okay, dip into the mechanic a little bit. I fade it. There we go. Okay. Um, I'll let that sit for a second, and then we'll do the silver to the. Uh, no, we're not. We're gonna do a little bit of nulln oil to the rivets, the bolts. Actually, we could probably do that now since it's probably dry. There we go. Grab 
up around the skull a little bit. All right, cool. Now we'll give that a second. Do the silver. And um, yeah, I think uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll um, dry brush this real quick. And uh, actually we could probably do that now while all that's drying. Um, I've got this like wicked light. Ah, you know what? We'll do the Slanishi gray. <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And let's see, give me, give me a dry brush. Okay, dry brush. There we go. Pick up on some of that texture. We're gonna end up going over this with a um, little bit of seraphim, but uh, that'll be that'll be nice. It'll kind of push it back a little bit. Also, we can go through and pick out a few rocks uh, just to differentiate the color a little bit. I think we'll probably use like an off-white. Yeah, this is coming out really nice. I'm not bothering too much with uh, underneath him. Figure that could be a little bit darker from the chateaus. Yeah. There we are. Just a little bit, a little bit of something. It was just a little too soft earlier. Um, yeah, cool. Let's see. Let that chill. I'm gonna go get some washes and we'll be right back. I took the liberty of uh, putting a little bit of um, tan and brown over there. Uh, we're just gonna do all our washes all at once. And this is where I don't really put too much concern. So I'm putting a little bit of the uh, seraphim sepia on the stumps. And uh, I'm just gonna drag that all over that thing. Um, typically uh, with these, like I try to put some green stuff um, roots on the tree, uh, kind of coming out from the bottom. But this is off of my, uh, I think I have a rose bush out in the front of the house. Um, but I got a little lazy. So what I'm gonna do is just to make sure that there's enough um, like leaves and everything laying around the base of this. So, okay, add a little bit of water. And I'm gonna bring this water closer. So I'm gonna do nice and nice thin coverage and add just little spots of uh, agrax. Uh, change it up just a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of long. Spread it all around. Okay, so something else I did was add that uh, the off-white to some of those random uh, rocks. And once again, that was just to get it all done all at once kind of a deal. And with those rocks, as you see, I'm getting kind of down around the dirty edge, but I'm not getting the actual, like the base of the rock itself. And as you can kind of see it's, like the wash is almost framing the rock a little bit. I think it looks really cool. You know, if I were more intentional about it, I'd probably put the Agrax or shade uh, underneath the night. So that's kind of what I'm starting to do. And the seraphim on the periphery. Somebody was telling me that Agrax is just, um, is, is not fully saturated in olive oil. So it's pretty much the same recipe. Um, just one of them has, I don't know, maybe more water or whatever it is. I thought that was kind of interesting. That Nolan oil has like that kind of oily feel to it. Um, and that would make sense. It has a little bit of brown to it. Okay, it looks like I got 
a little crazy with the water over here. Okay. Let that chillax. It's going to be a while. So I'm actually going to go to bed. Okay. After this, we should be able to assemble. Um, we're going to throw a little bit of black into the pot. And uh, we're going to be doing the soot off of the, um, the exhaust. And that was part of the reason I didn't spend too much effort um, <clears throat> on the uh, texturing the exhaust. Was that it's just well, if it's going to be covered up anyway. Okay, so a little bit of water, a little bit of this really nice um, flat black. And there we go. It's probably a little bit too wet, but who knows? I'm trying to just barely put it on there. There we go. Yeah, it's looking good. There we go. Uh, finally, oh, not finally, I guess we have two more. What do they call this? The thermal lance? Yeah. One more, now finally. <clears throat> Uh-oh, running out of black. Alright, mix up a little bit more. But you get the idea. Yay, we're all assembled. And look what I found. Typhus corrosion. Uh, so we're gonna put a little bit of this, and oh man, it's good stuff. Oh, I love it. Uh, we're gonna find some of those, uh, some of those hydraulic rams, and so a lot of times uh, you get the. Oh, we're gonna add a little bit of water. Um, like you get a lot of the hydraulic fluid kind of mixed down. In the uh, recesses, uh, like the the rams typically aren't super. You know, they have, they have a little gasket, and gaskets are known to fail. So we're, we're gonna throw a little bit of this down there um, to kind of represent the uh, the grime and all the shnike that's being collected. Uh, and these the rams don't typically collapse uh, uh, perfectly, so I throw in the natural sienna around the edges there we go get up in there and don't worry like we're gonna it's not gonna stay like this like there's a little bit extra uh, laying around and give it a little and it should go and settle down uh, as I mentioned before in other videos, uh, some people use a fixative. Um, I typically don't because we're using sealer, um, so I don't feel it's necessary. But if you want a more control, uh, you could definitely use like a, a pigment sealer. Some people use um, isopropyl, so they'll put it on and they'll use isopropyl to adhere it. Once again, this is like the last step I do, so I don't really mine because we're going to go right to uh, clear coat well not right to it we're actually going to put some flocking on here and do the base rim okay so blow there we go yeah it's subtle but i think it looks good gives it an environmental effect and you know what there's a little bit on the ground so i'm just going to dust uh, some here and there just to blend these in a little bit. And yeah, call it good. First thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna do, you don't have to do, what I wanna do is uh, um, we're gonna put some longer, uh, long grass. I don't know what you would call it. Jute? I don't know. Um, wheat grass? 
Okay. <clears throat> so it comes in a, like a bag full of these really long pieces that you gotta clip off, which is nice. Also a pain in the ass. And then stick it down there, lift up. Then go through and oh, we don't want that piece. That one's a jerk. Let's trim it a little bit. Get those stragglers out of there. There we go. Don't want that one. Oh, there's a piece of just hanging out on top. Cool. So we got that little tuft. Um, then I have some really old uh, Games Workshop scorched grass, although I think I've mixed it with a few other uh, brands by this point. Uh, yeah, I'm at the end of my glue. I'm gonna mix our grass strains. Uh, we're not gonna go for full coverage, just like little spots here and there. Traps it down, some of that. Blow on it, a lot of blowing. Um, another thing I like to do is, um, it's, I think these little birch seeds, uh, you could probably get them at like a diorama, on a diorama website, that's where I got them. Um, if I had waited a little longer, uh, I would have had a birch tree that I could just pluck them off my car. Uh, so if you're, Industrious like that, just keep an eye out. But they're nice, they kind of look like leaves. So, uh, now if, if you if you look around, you're gonna find that the leaves tend to get caught in the recesses of things, or the, uh, you know, they're, they're swept along and then all of a sudden they deposit, like right at the base of a tree, or in a crack of cement, or something, so that's kind of, so when I put them there, I usually try to find like a big rock or something. Okay. So that's about, about it. Um, now let's do this kind of all over the base and see what it looks like. Okay, here we go. The finished piece. Uh, pretty happy with it. Uh, let's see, what did I do? I added a little bit of gloss coat up top and on that uh, visor as well as the eyes. Um, I did leave these so you can move them a bit. Um, but yeah, you can see some of the, the grass I added some more of the tufts as well as the, uh, the green grass or some more leaves. Some got caught in the rocks down there. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that. As you can see, uh, the gloss coat kind of toned down um, some of that earth uh, color pigment. Um, I think if I did it again, I'm, well, I will do it again, but, uh, next time I do it, I'll, I'll add a little bit more. Um, I did give it a heavy, uh, coat of, um, of purity seals. So sometimes that, uh, it, it, it saturates, it makes it a little bit darker. Uh, and when it's up against a dark model, it's a little bit harder to see. Um, I did some, uh, some terminators. Let's see, grab one of these guys. Um. And it, you know, up against the black, it looked really good, and then it just kind of disappeared. So, uh, typically, I don't know what happened. Um, yeah, here's one where you can see it's a little bit. You can see a little bit more on that leg. Um, maybe I'd use a different color, or maybe uh, add a little bit more. Uh, so, it seemed like my technique today wasn't as good as it normally is. Um, but yeah, man, like I'm, I, I dig this guy. I think it was a fun model. Um, it was pretty easy to paint. I, I think knights in general, because they are such, like, they have such big surfaces to work on, they seem to be just, like, a, a little bit easier than they seem. You know, you look at this big model and you're like, damn, that's daunting. Um, but, yeah, once again, it's just, like, lots of big flat surfaces. So it's, you know, it's just taking and scaling it up, especially when you're airbrushing. You know, like, uh, scale isn't the thing that holds you back. It's the, the color changes every time you have to clean your brush out or something. So, yeah.
That's it, guys. All right. Can't wait to see what you guys come up with. <laughs>